The ram. <laughs> the ram. <laughs> I'm not even. What's up, internet? Early this month, Yuga Tech posted a PC building guide for a gaming rig with a 45,000 peso budget. And I've talked about it before on the podcast why that guide was not the best. In fact, it's extremely poor value for money. Sobrang dehado ka kung sumunod ka sa guide na yon. It uses outdated parts, which is not bad some of the time, but not the best fit for, for a 45,000 peso budget. At other times, they use parts that are really, really, really overpriced. No! And so just to provide a counterexample of how your 45,000 pesos could be spent a lot better, this is our 45,000 peso gaming rig. To arrive at these numbers, I used what we have in shop and I used our PC builder. I just used it for the convenience. Kasi sobrang dali lang, we really intended our PC builder to have a great drop-down menu, super easy to use, dalabas yung total per part, and then yung total for the build. But it's not super useful if you are still new to the PC space and are trying to figure out the parts. Kasi walang explanation. May drop-down lang nga, pipiliin mo yung mga components. But if you don't know how to choose the components, then all of that just means nothing. It's nonsense. Kaya medyo na apektuhan talaga ako dun sa Yuga Tech Guide. Kasi Yuga Tech is a more general publication. It reaches a wider audience. It might reach people who don't know a lot about PC building and put their blind faith and trust in that publication and will just buy whatever they recommend. And they really won't get their money's worth. I'm not saying that you should buy from Hardware Sugar, that this is the best. But I just wanted to show from a very quick example the kind of performance that you should be getting ballpark for a 45k build. And para patas yung laban, everything that you got in the Yuga Tech build, kasi hindi lang yung build, complete setup na siya. May monitor, may keyboard, mouse. You'll also get dito sa example natin of a 45k gaming build. So ka na ba sa unactivated windows mo? Well, lucky you! Pinakabago mula sa cdkeyoffer.com Windows 10 and Windows 11 activation codes. Legit, safe, at pinakamura. Madali lang umorder. Hanapin ang Windows version na gusto mo. Piliin ang preferred payment method. Wala pang 5 minutes, may CDK ka na para sa Windows mo. Marami na kaming natulungan. Dati, sadong depressed ako. But now, I found a love of my life. Dati, aimless and walang purpose ang life ko. But now, I'm a world-class Zumba instructor. So, web developer ako and content creator for a YouTube channel. And ngayon, ganun pa rin ako pero activated na yung Windows ko. Kaya ako naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software. Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com So let's start. Hindi ko memorize yung Uitech build. But for their CPU, they had a Ryzen 5 4500, which is still Zen 2. The Ryzen 5000 series, which is one step below the current generation, is Zen 3. The Ryzen 4000 series CPU was an odd choice. Una kasi overpriced talaga siya. They were getting it for 7,699 pesos. We can get the next gen CPU, Ryzen 5 5500, for only 6,050. <laughs> next gen, mas mura pa. So, no brainer. Why get a Ryzen 5 4500 for more if you can get a Ryzen 5 5500? Na take nota, Zen 3 na yun. So, there were improvements in the architecture of the chips. So you can actually get the Ryzen 5 5500 for cheaper. The motherboard that they used, MSI B450. I've stated before that actually this is not a bad choice if you can get it at a good price. The main drawback of B450 it doesn't have PCIe 4 support. But around this price range, you can kind of live without that. And their motherboard was priced at 6200 for just a little bit more, 6,850, you can get a B550 motherboard which supports PCIe 4, has better internet speeds. So there are a bunch of changes which make B550 good value for money if you can get it at a good price. Mas mahal nga yung pinili natin, but not by a lot. And you get value for money. 
Especially because the SSD that we chose, jumping to it, is an MP33 1TB. Yung SSD ni Yugatec, 500GB lang. 500GB is really quite small. Gaming PC nga to, mag install ka ng game, tapos maubusan ka ng space. When you get new games, you're going to have to uninstall those previous games to make room for your new ones. You have a lot more breathing room with the 1TB. Plus, with the B550, you can enjoy the PCIe 4 speeds of the NVMe. And since we're on the motherboard, yung pinili ni Yugatec was an M80X board, which is good. M80X boards are usually cheaper. Yung pinili din rin natin, M80X board. But the case that Yugatec chose was a ATX case. And I have no idea why you would go with an ATX case with an M80X motherboard. A lot of people, una, to be upfront, that doesn't affect performance. You can stick in an M80X board into an ATX case, hindi magbabago yung performance niya. Pero mas malaki kasi yung ATX case, the space that it has for boards is larger. It's an ATX case, so it can take ATX motherboards. An M80X board is smaller, so parang sinakop na siya ng case. Parang ang laki ng dead air or dead space inside the case. So aesthetically, a lot of people don't like using an M80X board in an ATX case. Plus, there's no reason to use an ATX case here because you can save a lot of money going with a cheaper M80X case that will still have RGB, that has better air cooling. Don't get me wrong, the case that Yugatec chose is an MSI Gangnir. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, we've sold the Gangnir or variations of it in Hardware Sugar as well. Pero hindi siya bagay sa build na to. Our go-to M80X budget case is the Deepcool Matrex 43FS. So you do get RGB. It's static RGB, meaning you can't use software control to monkey around with the lighting. But it does have RGB and it is controllable through a physical button. And it's a lot cheaper. You don't need to spend 5,000 pesos for a case for this build. And getting to the heart of the matter, a gaming PC lives or dies by its GPU. You can complain about bottleneck, you can complain na hindi tugma talaga yung ibang parts. Pero kahit sobrang olats ng parts mo, if your GPU is a good GPU, it will elevate your gaming PC. Bottom line, gaming PC, at the end of the day, lives or dies by its GPU. And Yucatec chose to die <laughs> by choosing a 1050 Ti card for, let me look up the price, 10,800 pesos. <laughs> For a 1050 Ti. Don't get me wrong, a 1050 Ti is a good card if you're buying it secondhand, if you're buying it at a good price. Daming factors involved, and that's why we really try to provide context when we do similar buying recommendations. Because it all depends on anima games that usually linalaro mo, ano resolution mo. And I, I want, I, I'm, I'm trying really hard to be fair to the Yuga Tech article, pero. 10,800 pesos or 1050 Ti. I'm just gonna put it out there. I chose a 1650, which you can get for 10,250. Mas mura pa kaysa sa 1050 Ti. Pro tip, there are a lot of YouTube channels na yung ginagawa lang nila, they take two cards, they play different games on exactly the same route, on exactly the same settings. Yung nagbago lang yung GPU. So you can clearly see which GPU provides better performance and roughly what to expect. A lot of work goes into these side-by-side -side comparisons and props to the YouTubers who do that. Big resource for the buying public. Now, a lot of you guys are wondering, eh, manaloko din tong hardware sugar na to, hayop ka. 1650 lang para sa 45,000 peso gaming build. Because I have been reading the comments, some people have said, I can do a build for 3060. I can do a build better kung gamitin natin yung mga 6,000 AMD GPUs. Again, this isn't the best possible 45K build. This is just what I can easily build. I just wanted to make the point that performance-wise, it's not very hard to come up with a better build. So I don't doubt that you could probably make a build with a better GPU than a 1650, especially if you do it secondhand. In fact, here at Hardware Sugar, we just came out with a video. 1650 then yung GPU. Total all in mo for that gaming rig was 15,000. Oh, eh, but ang layo ng 15,000 sa 45. Because we bought the 15,000 second hand at wala pa siyang perifs nun. Again, context matters. If you can do better, please do better and post it in the comments. Para if people are looking for a 45k build, alam nila what 
to play around with what kind of components they can expect na good value for money. I think we've actually already covered most of the components. So, napag-usapan na natin yung ah, RAM. The RAM... <laughs> the RAM... <laughs> I'm not even... Uh, like, if you think na parang scripted to natatawa ko, 100% hindi. <laughs> Naalala nalala ko lang yung RAM. <laughs> and natawa lang talaga ako. For a 45,000 gaming PC, they chose one stick of 8 gigabytes, Kingston 3200 megahertz for for a gaming PC in 2023. And my laughter is genuine. That is terrible. So we've chosen 2x8, so you get 16 gigabytes, 3600 megahertz, which is faster. I have no problem with Kingston for RAM. Generally, okay naman siya. But 8 gigabytes in 2023 for a gaming PC. And as a lot of the comments rightly pointed out, Ryzen is you know, you want a lot of RAM for Ryzen. Also, the RAM speed matters for the memory clock of Ryzen. I don't want to get too technical, but 3600 is the sweet spot. You say you go tech naman 32, so okay na, but if you can get 36, why not? Sa atin, pasok naman sa budget. For us, it's 3400, so double. But you do get double the capacity, you get 16 gigabytes, and you do get faster, 3600 megahertz. And that's the whole point why we're trying to save on the other components. Yun nga, case ni Yugatech, overpriced. Yung GPU ni Yugatech, overpriced. The savings we can get from there will translate them into better parts. And that's clearly seen here in the RAM where, yes, we were paying more, but we're getting a lot better value for money. Again, double. Double the capacity and faster RAM at that. PSU, they went with a cooler master. No, no problem with that, actually. 600 watts probably 80 plus white. We've been happy with Cooler Master PSUs in the past and we do carry it in the shop. But for this kind of budget build, we decided to go with an FSP 550 watts. FSP, very trusted brand. We sold hundreds, especially these kind of lower end PSUs of theirs during the pandemic. So we trust FSP. FSP is one of the rare PSU manufacturers that actually manufactures. Sila talaga mismo gumagawa ng PSUs nila. But to be honest, I don't have any particular criticism about this choice of hardware. Onto the CPU cooler, and Yugatech chose a Thermaltake CPU cooler. And my question here is why? <laughs> For this kind of CPU, you don't need to get a third-party cooler. Just go with the stock cooler. The cooler that comes free with the CPU. And that's what we did in this case. In our price list, the CPU cooler is zero because we're not paying for anything. We're just using the stock. That's what's nice about AMD. Their stock coolers are actually quite decent. And we can use the money for better things, for better performing parts. And even the description of the Yuga Tech CPU cooler, it's na parang kailangan ko lang kasi maglagay ng CPU cooler eh. And I'll quote verbatim. For the CPU cooler, we have the Thermaltake UX200 ARGB CPU cooler. There's nothing special with the UX200. Then why pay 1,900 for it? Aside from the fact that it is more than serviceable for the build, you know what's serviceable? You know what you can use for this build? The free stock cooler! Oh, we also forgot to mention that it has ARGB, which may or may not mean anything to you. You can buy the UX200 for 1,900 via the SM Malls online app here. Ah, the SM Malls online app, which we'll talk about at the end of this video. Alright, going to monitor. And actually, this is quite tricky. When I first saw this guide from Yugatech, tas nakita ko may monitor. Maybe that's the saving grace of this particular guide. Kasi mahal talaga yung mga monitor. Especially a gaming monitor where you want high refresh rate. So, drum roll please. What did the Yugatech guide suggest? A Lenovo D2220 monitor, 75 Hz, for 4,995. It's a better than average gaming experience. It's a higher <laughs> refresh rate gaming monitor. <laughs> 75 hertz high refresh rate na yon. Um, <laughs> I mentioned in our podcast, you know, I've I've been in computers since I was like 10, almost 10 years old. Uh, pumasa ko mga 486. So wala pa to mga hello ROG PG48UQ. And long time viewers know that I just can't help. Anyway. <laughs> Back in the day, wala pa tong manipis na monitors na to. We had CRT monitors, the very bulky kind of monitors. So, pero kahit noon, nung bata pa ako, 
486 pa tayo, Pentium, Pentium. Wala pang number yung Pentium, yung unang Pentium series. CRT monitors, may ganun na. So it is ludicrous <laughs> to call a 75Hz monitor in 2023 as a gaming monitor. Oh, grabe. The monitor we chose, and it's not available at Hardware Sugar, because at Hardware Sugar, medyo... We try to splurge on monitors. We think monitors are something na you really get good value if you pay a bit more. So yung mga on-stock namin, medyo mahal to be honest. Not that you don't get value for money, you do. But the overall price that you fork out, medyo can be intimidating depending on your budget. So we went back on our experience. Fortunately, last year we did a video where we bought the three cheapest gaming monitors on Lazada. And okay pa ba sila? So these are monitors na kami talaga nagastos. Came out from our own pocket and we actually use them. I actually use them for gaming. And all of them are 24 inches, larger than that recommended by Yugatech. And all of them are 165 hertz. Yen yung gaming monitor. <laughs> actually, to be honest, me when I play, I only look for around 144 hertz. Beyond that, I think it's kind of hype. I think it's medyo how much ba can my eyes appreciate. But you know, gaming monitors are pushing that. So 165 hertz, yun talaga tunay na gaming monitor. Magagamit pa yun, 1080p playing Valorant. The monitor we chose is the AOC one. Again, the details are in the previous video that we did. But overall, you do get value for money. It's, it's 24 inches, 165 hertz, IPS screen. The colors were not bad. Was slightly more expensive at around 5,900. But again, you're basically getting double the performance. 22 inches, 75 hertz. Di kung alam anong screen panel yung kay Yugatech. The one that we're recommending, 1,000 pesos more, 5,900 pesos, but it's 24 inches, IPS screen, 165 hertz. And I've actually used it. I can stand in front of you guys, I can look at you straight to this camera, and not feel any guilt recommending it. Basically, I'm putting my reputation. I'm putting whatever trust you have in me on the line by recommending these things because that's what you should do with a guide. When you recommend, Dapat tapat. Dapat matingnan mo yung kausap mo sa mata at sabihin mo na for this budget, I think this is what you can do. And if it were me, that's what I would get. Keyboard mouse, so it's a combo. To be honest, um, I didn't really think about this. I, got, I just got the cheapest combo that we have. It's from Cooler Master. Good brand overall. How hard, you know, how bad can it be a Cooler Master combo? I think ours is around 1,900. Theirs was 500 pesos. <laughs> From an unknown Rapu. Rapu X120 Pro USB keyboard and mouse. I have no idea. I have no experience with Rapu. They might be good. So forgive me, guys from Rapu, if your stuff is reputable. I don't have any experience. But Cooler Master, you know, is a very well known brand. 1,900 pesos for a keyboard and a mouse from them is good value for money. And again, I just didn't want to think about it too much. I just got what was on hand at Hardware Sugar. So, the total for Yugatech was 45,000 pesos. It's a 45,000 peso gaming guide. Pero yung sa amin... A shade below 45,000. Again, maybe not the best, but certainly within the ballpark of what you could expect from a decent 45k gaming build. And before I leave you guys, because this wasn't, you know, this wasn't an exercise in making the best. It was more an exercise of if you are thinking about a build at that price range for gaming, please do more research. Is just the number one point I want to make here. And the fact that we can easily come up with double the performance for the same price attests to that. Yun lang naman yun. And the last point I want to make is, and I will quote directly from. The Yugatech guide again, guide, <laughs> guide. This is the third to la the last paragraph of the guide. Actually, our 45,000 peso build above was only really possible because of the competitive prices and discounts being offered at stores within SM Mall's online app. When we tried looking for the components on other platforms, the total ballooned to 50k, 55k, and even upwards of 60k. The last point I want to make in this video is not buy from Hardware Sugar. It's that 
this guide, it doesn't provide value for the audience. When the article was first shared on Facebook, the fact that it was sponsored was clear. But the article itself did not mention anything at all about sponsorship. Lately, I noticed that the article has been changed to say that it was written by a Yugatech brand partner. I have no idea what this means and there is no explanation in the article. I really have issues with that kind of approach. Dito sa Hardware Sugar, and again, it's not, it's not about elevating myself. It's like, oh, sobrang galing namin compared to other publications. It's just that, you know, when I say Dito sa Hardware Sugar, I want to point out that we walk the walk, that we do what we say. And Dito sa Hardware Sugar, if something is sponsored, it's very clear. We make, we mentioned it in the video, we mentioned it in the text description, that it is sponsored because that's important for the audience to know that perhaps our judgment and what we're telling you has been influenced in some way that it is not our honest opinion that it is that it has been supplanted by what the sponsor wants you to know and actually our sponsors are legit they don't want us to lie to you they want us to tell you what we think genuinely think is good about their products i really try not to be negative because actually mabenta yung negative I've actually said this before. Two years ago in our Core Liquid 240R video about an AIO, I've said that being negative, especially on YouTube, on the internet sells, but we're not that kind of channel. We really try to find the positives about something that we're commenting on, that we're critiquing, whether it's a product or a service or, or a build guide. And even in this critique, I've said that I have no problem with using a B450 if the price is right. I have no problem with the PSU that they chose. Even in this guide, which really I honestly find so terrible, that is my honest opinion on this guide. It provides nothing of value to the reader. I really find it terrible. But even here, I've tried to be fair and I've tried to find something that you can try to latch on and say that, okay, this wasn't so bad. So we really try not to do negativity, except when it's called for. And again, like the Core Liquid 240R, that was a terrible AIO. It performed, actually the looks were good, the performance was good, but the reliability was terrible. And we called out the brand on it. Even if that meant maybe pissing off a major brand that we relied on because we bought a lot of parts from MSI, we still do. And fortunately, there were no repercussions. Hats off to MSI. Of course, we're a small channel. What the hell do they care, right? <laughs> Some pipichugin channel from the Philippines comments on it. The, it was picked up. Other larger YouTubers have commented on it, but we were the first for the 240R. So we don't do negativity, but when we find something really terrible, and especially in this case where it was a guide from a more general publication, a general audience-oriented publication, I felt that we really had to address that. In our Filipino culture, actually, uh, hindi tayo mahilig sa call out, and this isn't a call out video. It's more like a Please do your own research if you're thinking of a 45k gaming build. In our culture, it happens a lot that the person who attacks, who critiques, who is negative, parang siya pa yung masama. Kasi, yun nga, we're very, as a culture, we're very aggression adverse. We're very, we don't want to get in your face. Uh, we're very conflict adverse. And I, I was hesitant to do this video, to be honest. Kasi nga, ay ayoko na parang kami yung masama, kami yung parang, oh, di kayo na yung magaling, di ba? And that's another kind of tech guy that I really hate, to be honest. Bukod sa alam kong bumuo ng PC, eh alam ko rin manira ng computer. I personally code eh. Actually, lahat ng pwedeng gawin sa PC, alam ko. Publicly before that, I'm not that kind of guy. I really don't care if you know more than me. I never said that I'm the best. So I, I didn't want this video to be like that na then I know better. Ano klaseng PC shop to? The Verge Philippines! The Verge Philippines! The Verge! Nakita! Ano klaseng billion! For your hard-earned 45,000 pesos, you can do a lot better. And even a slapdash build like the one that I just described will be lower priced and will give you double the performance. Thanks for watching. Paminsan, may nagtatanong kung may kilala ba kaming computer shop na trusted, yung hindi ka lolokohin. Actually, meron. Kami. Full-service PC store ang Hardware Sugar. Nagbabenta kami ng PC components. 
Nagbebenta rin kami ng fully assembled rigs. We clean computers. Kasama na rin yung excellent cable management namin and CPU cooler repasting sa cleaning. We also clean and repaste GPUs. Nasa Makati yung physical store namin and you can also buy from our site www.hwsugar.ph na 100% palaging up-to-date yung inventory dun. Kung in-stock yung item sa amin, available yun sa site. We also ship nationwide. Thanks for watching and maybe one of these days magkita tayo sa shop.